Hello everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 Tutorial 10. Before we start this tutorial, you will want to get familiar with the required stages of the rendering pipeline. An overview of all of the stages is at this link I'll put in the description. I think they do a pretty good job of explaining it. It's called DirectX Essentials Tutorial Explore the DirectX Graphics Pipeline by Live Lessons. It's only 8 minutes long, so I'd recommend you watch that before watching this video. The required stages are that we're going to be looking at is the input assembler, the vertex shader, rasterizer, pixel shader, and output merger. And the only ones that we have to actually program with shader code is uh, pixel shader and vertex shader. The rest we kind of just set up. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on the input assembler part. So for the input assembler, we will have to describe the input layout of our vertex structure. First, in our graphics header, let's uh, create a COM pointer to store our input layout. Now we must create a vertex structure. Let's create a new header called vertex we're going to put this in the graphics folder. First, we will need to include DirectX Math. DirectX Math will be used to access certain data types we will need to pass to the shaders, and it will also give us access to transformation functions. Our vertex structure will look like this. The constructor will take two floats, an X and a Y, since we're only doing 2D rendering for the very first bit, and then when we get to 3D rendering, we'll add another float for the Z value. Where we are storing the data is in an XM float 2. This is from that DirectX math header that we just included. And this is just two floats, and they're both 32 bits. After we have created our vertex header, let's go to the top and click Show All Files. And let's move this vertex header into our graphics folder. And then once that is done, uncheck show all files. Now let's go to the graphics header. And we are going to create a new initialize function. We are going to call this one initialize shaders. Now let's create the definition for it. And for now, we are going to initialize the input layout in this function. In the future, we will have our input layout as part of the vertex shader class, and they'll just be tied together. But we will get more into that when we create the shader class. So the way that describing an input layout works is we create an array of D3D11 input element descriptions. And for our first argument, we are going to pass in position. Now the first element for the layout is the semantic name. This can be anything as long as there is a matching semantic in the, ver in the shader that we are tying it to. This will be more apparent when we create the vertex shader and you will see the name in there also. The next argument is the semantic index. We will not get into this yet. This is just necessary for if two semantics have the same name. We will look more into this when we get into instancing and we will use this to allow us to pass a matrix to the input layout. The next element is the format of this data. Now we are passing in two 32-bit floats. So the format that we will use is the R32G32 float format. If we wanted three floats for our data, we could put add in a B32. And if we wanted four, we could put in an A32, just to give you an idea of how that works. For more info on that, you can look up DXGI format or just, you know, type it in and hit F1. It should pull up the documentation with all of the different format types and their information. The next argument is the input slot. This can be a value between 0 and 15 if we have multiple input slots, but we don't currently, so we're just going to use 0. Next is the aligned byte offset. We only have one element, so the offset will be 0. If we had more elements, then the offset would be based off of the previous element's offset plus their data length. Alternatively, if this is not the first element, so the offset's not zero, you could pass in this macro 
and it will work its macro magic and determine what the offset should be. Next is the input slot class. This can be either the vertex data or the instance data. Since we are not doing instancing, we will just pass in the vertex data for this. And the last thing is the instance data step rate. We are not using instancing, so for now we will just set this to zero. Now that we have the description of our input layout, let's try to go and create it. As you can see, our input layout has a few different prerequisites for our creation. We need a pointer to our description, the number of elements, a pointer for our vertex shader, we need the buffer size for our vertex shader, and we need the address to fill our input layout. We currently have access to all of these except the vertex shader information. So let's go ahead and add a variable to store our vertex shader buffer for now in our graphics header. Later we will encapsulate this into the shader class. So in our graphics header, we are going to add a variable to store our vertex shader buffer information, just the byte code when we load it in. And the data type is id3d10blob. Let's go back to our graphics CPP. So the first thing we want to pass in is the layout. Next is the number of elements. We can calculate the number of elements like so. And then we can just pass in this variable here. Next is the shader byte code with input signature. And the way that we are going to get this is we are going to call get buffer pointer on our vertex shader. So vertex shader get buffer pointer. All right, and the next thing is we need to get the byte code length. So we will just call get size on the vertex shader buffer. Get buffer size. And the last is the pointer to the address of our input layout. This is just to populate the input layout. So we are going to pass in the input layout dot get address of. Then the last thing is, you know, we will just do our normal error checking and see if it successfully created or not. And in our initialize, we will have to call this initialize shaders function that we just created. So let's go up to where we are initializing. So when we run this, it should fail because we aren't, we haven't created our vertex shader and we are actually trying to use it when we are creating the input layout. But let's just test it and see what we get. All right, so yeah, we just get a read access violation. That makes sense. So I'm going to stop this tutorial for now just because we're going to go a lot more into the shader in the next tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are going to first set up our Visual Studio to get proper syntax highlighting and IntelliSense for our shader code. Then we are going to go over how the vertex shader will work. And then we are going to create our vertex shader and then set it up so the create input layout should be accepting our vertex shader. We will probably also create the shader class for our vertex shader.